Hey, welcome back everyone to another great episode of Sell Those Flipping Cars. I'm Zachary, and in today's episode, we're going to be replacing the transmission in the 2003 Ford Taurus single overhead cam 3.0 liter V6. So, if you've been looking for this video and you want to know uh, more, just keep watching. Make sure you hit subscribe, and uh, let's jump into it, guys. Stay tuned. Alright, so here we are everyone uh, for the 2003 the transmission replacement. We're going to go ahead and start it off with a 10 millimeter on a quarter inch drive. We're going to need that to take the negative side off the battery. Just loosen that up real quick, take that off, we got that out of the way. I'm going to take the positive side off as well, that way I can just get the battery completely out of my way. Get that out of the way. Uh, now we're going to uh, take the air, air filter assembly. We're going to take that out, get that out of the way. You're going to need an 8 millimeter with a quarter inch drive for that one as well, okay? So let's go ahead and make it simple. We'll just loosen it up right here. Make sure you unhook your sensors. Disconnect your vacuum line. You do not want to be breaking these. If you do break them, you will need to replace them. Uh, these are rubber lines, as you can see, some person tried fixing it or taking some tape off right there or something. Worst case scenario, I'll have to replace it, but that's okay. I went ahead and bought a, a universal kit on uh, Amazon for the vacuum lines. Uh, mine are no longer made out of uh, rubber, they're made out of silicone, which silicone does a lot better. Uh, resisting dry rod and all that stuff that rubber hoses will actually fall victim to. <clears throat> so I'll throw the, uh, the link to that in the description down below as well. That way you guys have that. I personally love it. You know, uh, you're working on a lot of vehicles or you're working on all right the air filter assembly is out i went ahead and took the neck off right there the uh tube the air assembly the battery we got that all out of our way now the next thing we got to go to is unhooking the uh all the sensors and the shift cable housing <clears throat> So, here's our cables right here, here's our harness, let's go ahead and unhook that, unhook this, jeez, big in harness right here. I got a push button starter I was testing the vehicle on. All right, get you guys off the stand here real quick. Let's go in for a closer look. All right, so we got this connector right here. This one right here, we went ahead and took it out. That would be this one, okay? They're gonna be in the same you know, location that where they're gonna hook up. So we gotta take this one out right here. 
and we got to take the shift cable out which is right here okay take this off i'm gonna move the battery tray so we have a nice clear view and go from there hi right, guys so i'm clearing everything out i went ahead and took the battery tray out uh, as I said, I'm just moving it so I have more room to work. Uh, my coolant system is already drained, but if uh, if you haven't drained your system yet, right now would be a, a good time to do that. You know, and you need new coolant in your system anyway. So make sure you, you drain it from the bottom right of the uh, radiator there's a drain cock down there go ahead and put a drip pan down there and start draining your system out uh, next if you are going to take this battery tray out make sure that the little uh, harness with the sensors attached to the side of it you unhook it just by taking these, push them to the left, and it'll unhook that. Then you can go ahead and uh, take your battery tray out and not dump all your dirt in there like I just did. So, good stuff. You see how that really clears out some more space for you for that transmission? Alright, next we are going to put you back on the stand. And our next ah, we still have to do the shift cable housing in the retaining nut, which is your yeah, I put you guys back on the stand too early. All right, you got your shift cable right here, your retaining nut right here. So we're gonna go ahead and take both those off move the shift cable out of your way okay i'm gonna go ahead and take a paint marker let me grab that real quick uh paint marker it's in the garage hold on guys all right in the garage what i was trying to do the other day was make it more organized in here my wife said i need to organize my work area but uh, every time I do that, I always lose all my stuff. You know, uh, you gotta have that great organization skill. And, uh... Ah. I put it with the rest of the markers. There we go. Got it. Let's go. All right. Yes, I had the washer and dryer in my garage as well. If you guys have ever noticed, there's a reason why I do that. Because I love working on the cars, but I love having clean laundry as well. So I put the washer and dryer in here, and so the whole time I'm working on cars, I can do my entire family's laundry. It's awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this with a paint marker, just so we remember where it's at. There we go. I marked it all around it. Okay. You guys see that? There. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, shift cable off, the retaining nut, and let's see. Let's see what we, what we got. Cooler lines. Yeah. Those are next. Okay. Let me go ahead and get the shift cable and the retaining nut and locate those transmission cooler lines and I'll be right back. What are you doing, bud? Huh? And I guess he's done working. <laughs> All 
All right, so we're back. Uh, we needed to take off the shift cable linkage, which is a 14 millimeter, okay? Also, once you take that shift cable linkage off, once you take the shift cable linkage off, okay, it's a 14 millimeter, you also have another nut right here, the retaining nut, okay? Same uh, socket size, 14 millimeter. Go ahead and take that off. Move your shift linkage out of the way, okay? Um, I have it right there because if you notice, right past it by your um, transmission dipstick, there's a sensor right there, okay? Make sure you unhook that. Don't forget about it. All right, next we have to do the cooling lines. You see right here, you have your cooling lines right here, but right, right here is your plastic retaining clip. All you need to do is squeeze the two tabs together, okay, and that tube will come out. So let's see if I can do this with one hand here. Uh, The vehicle is old, so those tubes have been in there a second, so you need to squeeze them, shake them a little, okay, and they'll come right off, okay? Uh, ooh, it's really bright now. My goodness. Let me go ahead and correct that. There we go. All right, so we, uh, we get the retaining... The retaining nuts are off. The cooling line is now uh, off. So next, we are going to uh, loosen the wheel nuts, okay, on both sides. Make sure it's secure the jack stands, okay? I got one side already done, uh, which Davian was helping me with. Jack stands are placed. Uh, I have the other side on as well but i'm uh, gonna take that wheel off right now um <clears throat> all right once you actually take the the wheels off geez we're gonna need to take the oxygen sensors off so we don't want to mess those up this is to get that transmission all the way out as you see we freed up some space. Sorry about that, guys. I live near military bases, so it gets loud every now and then. Fighter jets and helicopters and whatnot. Uh, all right. Um, it seems like we freed up pretty good space in there, but let's see what else we can get and uh, make this a little bit more easier on ourselves. Let's go ahead and get the tires off get those uh, out of the way and the uh, vehicle jacked up and we'll be right back oh also um, this is a great time to actually um, drain the transmission fluid so make sure it's all drained out because once we start breaking those bolts we're gonna have a pretty big mess on our hands so if you haven't drained it already make sure you drain it all right, so we're back. We went ahead and got the transmission cooler lines. See that bottom one is off. This top one, I actually had to unscrew it from the transmission housing. Um, so I went ahead and got that. You need to get this ground strap right here. That is going to be a 13 millimeter. And then we need to grab the starter. You gotta take the starter off, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go under the car. And while I was under here, I was gonna drop the, the oil as well. As you see, I got some water in it um, because we had a bad rain when I was doing the timing. It got into the oil pan, so I'm just gonna drop all that. Uh, it does not look like the transmission pan has a drain 
uh, drain bolt on it. So hold on, let's see the other. Oh. Gotta fit in here, right? There, let's see here. Oh, that is unfortunate, guys. It does not have a drain plug. So what we're gonna have to do, that looks like eight millimeter bolts right there. We will need to have a transmission gasket or you can use RTV, okay? Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use RTV uh, because I need this transmission done immediately. If you are planning this job, I suggest you get the transmission gasket for the 2003 uh, Ford Taurus with the 3.0 liter V6. Make sure you're getting the right one. I'm going to go ahead and throw the link to it in the description down below on Amazon. If you see somebody wants to come help. All right. So we're going to go ahead, pull that starter, get that off, get that ground strap, and then we'll be right back. <laughs> All right. As you can see, we're uh, really trucking along on here we're underneath um the car now so i went ahead and took the uh oil cap off because i went ahead and drained the uh, oil pan while i was down here get all that nasty oil out of there um i was just doing that because i mean i'm here and it has to be done anyways all right i took the starter out it's gone the inspection plate is also out of the way. Remember, when you take the starter out, you want to turn the crank until you see one of the torque converter bolts, okay? Once you see that, go ahead and mark it with a paint marker on the stud and the uh, torque converter itself, okay? That way, it can be put back together the way you took it out. Okay, all right, so we got that part, and, ah, yes, all right. Oh, there's the inspection plate, guys. I'm sure you've seen it before. All right, you're gonna turn the crank at the crank pulley with a 30 millimeter socket. Wait a second, my bad. Not 30 millimeter socket. 30 millimeter is what you'll need for the CV axle, okay? Because you have to take those out because they attach to the transmission. See? You have to take that out, which I didn't see any bolts on that side. I did see them on this side. So I took that one out. As you see, I have to replace my outer tie rods anyways. So I'm gonna pop that nut off right there at the bottom, okay? Push this up, move it out of the way so I can move the entire rotor or hub assembly out of the way, dislodging, or, hey, did you like that? Dislodging, it's gonna take your CV axle out and then I'll be able to pull the whole CV axle out of the transmission on both sides. You need both sides taken out that way you can lower the transmission, okay? All right, uh, drain the oil pan, mark the torque converter bolt. Uh, yes, the socket you need to spin the motor. One second, where did I put that thing? Ah, here it is. You will need a 13 sixteens. You see that right there, guys? Hold on. Oh. There we go. All right, 13 sixteens. I'm using a 12 inch extension. Went ahead, put it on the crank pulley, spun it until I saw that bolt. You're going to keep spinning until all those bolts are out and then the torque converter is done. So let's go ahead and take care of the CV axles, okay? And the uh, torque converter bolts. Uh, 
also, um, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do that, guys. Torque converter bolts, CV axles. I'll see you in just a second. Okay. All right, guys. So picking back up on the uh, CV axle removal, uh, you have to remove those uh, to get the transmission out. So that's pretty fun. Uh, you'll have to come over to both sides, of course. You want to remove your brake caliper and... Oh, no one saw that. No one saw that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and your caliper that was hanging out here the whole time uh, a good way to help that is to um, rest it on something like a helpful jack or you can go ahead and hang it up by the uh, wire and you know, I'm just going to use the jack um, alright for this you are going to need a 5 8 socket Three quarter socket, a three or two jaw puller, either one works. I had to pick one up because uh, my last one shattered on me. <laughs> uh, three quarters and 11 16 wrenches is going to help you with this, and also a good can of PB blaster. So, what you're going to do is take the rotor caliper, take those off get that stuff out of the way you're going to take out your lower ball joint you see down there I already popped it out so you are going to need a uh, ball joint pry bar I had to pick that up myself as well oh it's awesome guys all the stuff that I use in the video I'm going to throw in the description down below that way you don't have to hunt for it uh, like I had to uh, I'm going to Put the best quality stuff there at the, the best price so you know and no reason for any of us to go broke trying to fix our cars to get back to work um i went ahead and used a impact with the three jaw puller just made it a lot quicker work it's just gonna uh push the cv axle which is this side okay it's gonna push it right out of the hub Okay, so I went ahead and hit it up with some PB Blaster, let it sit there for a few minutes, you know, do its thing, and then uh, went in there. Uh, so it'll push this side out, then the inside of the CV axle right here, okay? You'll have to go in from below. You see it? I see it right in there. Uh, sticking right on your, your transmission. Okay, that's right to the transmission. Um, you're just gonna put a pry bar in between the transmission and the CV axle and pry it. It's not gonna be really difficult. This should actually come out pretty easy. So you might uh, came out pretty easy and no you know, scarring of it. So we're all good there. So all right, that's what you need to do at the uh, wheels. Okay, to get you all ready for this removal of your transmission. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the passenger side and then we'll move on to the next step, guys.
All right, guys, I want to show you this uh, before I jump to the, the puller here. All right, um, so I went ahead and tied up the, the calipers before any of you comment down below. Oh, you're not wiring it. I already did. I already did. I got it right here. We're good. All right. <clears throat> that lower ball joint, okay, that is going to be a 7 8 See that? 7 8 socket zip it off real quick then you're going to use your lower ball joint pry bar put it in there in between the lower control arm and the ball joint and uh smack it a few times on the end i used my trusty dead blow and i uh, went ahead and separated it okay then take a pry bar Put it right here on the lower control arm and pry down while you still have your uh, ball joint pry bar here. You can use that to move the hub out of the way. Okay? You see right there, it's just out of the way. It's not sitting on it anymore. You just need it not in the control arm. Okay? So now we're going to hook up the three way puller here. Okay? right here it's gonna zip on right here all alien style okay to your hub and it's gonna push that pin onto this pin this badass freaking ram here <laughs> it's gonna push your cv axle out of the hub once it's out you can grab it from the back with one arm the other arm <clears throat> okay uh move the hub out of the way okay all right, so let's go ahead and uh, get that started. That way you guys can see it. We can get that CV axle out of the way and then uh, move on to the next step. You guys know how much I hate the sound of compressors on a video 
but I'm sorry I had to do it. I ran out of juice and here we go guys pulled that CV axle out right there okay here's your hub you're just gonna set it right over here everything's just gonna sit there we're gonna go under the car real quick I'm gonna show you guys where we're gonna get this inner um, uh oh lost a train of thought <laughs> inner CV axle out so I'm gonna grab my pry bar and my free light from Harbor Freight. Thanks, Harbor Freight, for your awesome cheap lights that burn out all the time. Hey, they might burn out all the time, you know, but at least they'll last for a little while, right? All right, right. Woo. Hold on, guys. All right, there we go. You see it? If you guys don't see it, I don't know what to tell you. Right there, I'm gonna touch with my finger. Woo! Right there, that's your inner. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put my light down so I can see as well. <laughs> All right. Wow, sorry about that, guys. Ugh, ugh. One thing I don't like in a how-to video is bad lighting. Hold on just a second. There we go. All right, let's focus on that area right there. You guys see it? Cool. And let me get my prime on. Just gonna put it right, you know what? That's a monstrous pry bar. No wonder I'm having such a problem with it. Jeez. Hold on. Cool, we found a better one. Okay, let's go back, huh? And, yeah, you know what? Yeah, there we go. All right, you guys see it okay? There we go. Hold on just a second. Just gonna get the pry bar in right there. You see that, guys? Uh, barely, no. Now, hold on. Ah, there we go. That's a good grip. All right, right there. Just gonna. Woo! Well, this one moved a little. Hold on. Ugh. Woo! He's a tough one. Alright. She's one. Let's see if we can get it. It's in the back here. Alright, hold on a second, guys. Let me see. Alright, we know it moves some. We know it moves some. Let's see. So also that a little, let me jump back under there, see if I can free her up. Savian, what you doing? <laughs> oh, oh. Alright guys, uh, you got your CV axles out, and as you see, Xavian missed me so much, he wanted to come lay on me while I'm doing this part. So, here we go guys. The CV axles are out. Now, you need to put your transmission jack in place. Okay? Now, if you have these little claw things at the top, like I do, <laughs> you want to move those over to the sides. That way, you're not actually putting those onto the rim of the pan. Okay? Uh, that was actually the, the best spot that I saw that was most centralized Xavier that was the most centralized location I saw that uh, to keep the, the balance now guys if you start lowering it and it is imbalanced and it is, it is tipping you need to stop okay readjust your, 
Yay! You're, shh, you are so excited. Oh, I love it. My son loves cars. Man, that just uh, just makes you all warm inside. Okay. If it starts tilting or, you know, uh, anything, anything that is making you feel a bit iffy, stop. Okay? Adjust your chain. You should have a chain running around the top holding it to the top of the transmission jack also you can adjust the platform uh that's what those knobs right there are for Jeez. change the, the focus on right there guys okay that adjusts the tilt of uh that that platform that the transmission's resting on okay so hey there's no reason to be unsafe about this. All right, so the next thing. We got the transmission jack in place. Now we have to get the torque converter bolts, okay? And the first step to actually getting that is getting down, getting down here, go to where the starter was pulled out. Hold on, guys. I got another light. There we go. All right, where the starter was pulled out, and you are going to mark that first bolt. Hold on. You guys got a bad view, man. A bad view, man. All right, right there. You see that, that bolt? Let me go ahead and refocus. There we go. All right, that bolt right there. You want to make a mark with a paint marker on the torque converter. <laughs> on, on the plate and the stud. Okay, just one. You don't have to do, do it to all. Okay, you just want one. That way, when you go to reinstall, you can put it back the way you took it out. So go ahead and pull those. Also, after you pull that, after you pull that first one, you are so loud, so loud. All right, after you pull that first one, you're going to. With a, a long extension, okay, long extension, or you're gonna get a helper, okay? They are going to turn the, they're going to turn the crank pulley. You make me feel like I'm never home. This is amazing. All right, when you turn the crank. <laughs> Yes, I got robbed of my creeper. Uh, do you mind if daddy get, gets back to work you get back in the house you know before your mom catches us both and I get in trouble and you get hugged <laughs> that was okay that was dangerous nope no, don't be throwing parts. All right, mister, come on. All right, guys, like I was telling you, sorry, I had to put Xavier back in the house. He was pretty excited to see daddy finally uh, today. Uh, I have been, uh, you know, busy most of the day and that's all right you know busy doing errands more like it you know all right so you're going to mark the stud and the plate okay and then you are going to spin the crank pulley with a socket and an extension just going right on the center bolt of the crank pulley slowly turning it 
to the next torque converter bolt. Okay, slowly turn that bolt to the next torque converter bolt. Once you get all of them out, your, tor your torque converter will be free from the engine. Okay, uh, after that, all we have is two more steps. So let's go ahead and tackle it and uh, get this thing done. All right, guys, so after you get the CV axles out, you gotta go under the vehicle and get this Y pipe, okay? I'm trying to reach for it, my face can see. This Y pipe right here needs to come out, okay? Those bolts are uh, quite troubling, so definitely add some PB blaster, probably some heat to it as well. Uh, it should actually make it a lot better. Um, I have the jack all set up and also watch out for the O2 sensors, okay? Do not try unscrewing them, just unplug them, okay? Okay, right up here with the O2 sensor right there, see it? So all it is is a plug. It's not bad. Okay. All right, so we have the Y pipe out. The jack is in place. We're down to the final steps, guys. So come here on your driver's side wheel. You already have it off. Your mount right here needs to come off. You need to move your plastic uh, insert, pop these tabs off, and there's a couple, one there, and then a couple screws at the top, They're not bad. Okay, take that off, three bolts right there, take that mount off, okay, you have all your torque converter bolts already out. Yeah, just those three bolts right there. And then let's move on to the next step. All right, guys, we are all done with the <laughs> transmission mount. All right, if you're looking for what socket uh, actually works on that, it's a 15 millimeter, okay? So that'll knock that out. Next, we have our uh, transmission to engine bolts okay so we're going to take those out make sure you just follow along covering all those okay making sure those are all out as well and that as well is a 15 millimeter okay go ahead and take those out and Last thing is lowering the transmission out, guys. Uh, so we did it. Great job. Okay, that's uh, that's all she wrote. We're gonna take those bolts out right now, and uh, I actually have to repair the freeze plug behind the transmission that's right on the engine block. So that's gonna be quite fun or see why it's leaking if it's not that <laughs> so great stuff all right guys thank you so much i hope you enjoyed the video it helped you and it was uh beneficial to you changing out the transmission in your 2003 ford taurus uh make sure you smash that subscribe button and uh hit the bell icon so you get notified when i come out with more videos uh, right now it's the 2003 Ford Taurus. I'll, I'm also working on the 2014 Chrysler Town and Country and the 2001 Nissan Sentra. So uh, actually the Sentra, I just gave that to, uh, well, Misha and myself, my wife and I, uh, gave that to our 17 year old son. And of course he, he's uh, helping with the vehicles and you know, 
he does a lot and uh he deserves it so we went ahead and gave him that and now he has to pay for all the parts and no that wasn't a trick i, I promise i promise uh it was scout's honor scout's honor so all right guys thank you so much for uh checking out the video and hit like and i'll see you in the next one until next time guys keep on wrenching take care Oh. Hey guys, hey, thanks for checking out another episode with the uh, transmission replacement. Hey, if, if you ever want to know if there was anything different on reinstalling the transmission, there is. Everything goes back the exact way you took it out. When you are taking the transmission out, you want to make sure the, tor the torque converter comes with the transmission. So make sure you do that and then put everything back the way it came out and you're good to go if you do have any questions about the way it came out re-watch the video and just do everything in reverse <laughs> all right guys thanks again